Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Banana Pie M5. Well, this has actually been on the market for a couple months. I ordered one when it was released, but it got lost in transit, so I had to order another one. And I've had this one in my possession for the last week. I've been messing around with it and it actually works out pretty well with the correct software. If you're not familiar with Banana Pie, they've actually been on the market for a long time now. They make ARM-based single board computers. And this one's known as the Banana Pie M5. What we have here is 16 gigabytes of onboard eMMC storage, 4 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM, and a quad-core Cortex-A55 CPU up to 2 gigahertz. So taking a look at the board itself, up front here we have four USB 3.0 ports and gigabit Ethernet. We also have USB Type-C for power in, full-size HDMI, and a 3.5mm audio jack. When it comes to the GPIO, same layout as a Raspberry Pi, we have 40 GPIO pins here. And as you can see, all the components are laid out on top. As of late, I've seen a lot of single board computers come to the market where the CPU is located on the bottom of the board, and it does make it a bit awkward to, you know, come up with a case for it, or even just situate it on a desk without a case. This does support a micro SD card, but like I mentioned, this does have onboard storage. We have 16 gigabytes of eMMC storage, and you can install basically any operating system that they're offering over on their website on that eMMC storage, or you can boot it from the SD. For this video, I'm going to be running everything from that eMMC storage because it's going to be much faster. When comparing this to the Raspberry Pi, it's the same exact size, but when it comes to that Ethernet and USB layout, it's laid out just like the Raspberry Pi 3. So there is a chance that you could get a Raspberry Pi 3 case to work with this with a little bit of modification. When it comes to the specs, for the CPU, we have the Amlogic S905X3. This is a quad-core Cortex-A55 ARM CPU running at 2 GHz. The GPU is the Mali G31. We have 4 GB of onboard LPDDR4 RAM, 16 GB of onboard eMMC storage, plus micro SD card support, HDMI 2.0, so it can do 4K60 out, and it supports Android or Linux. As for pricing, when I originally purchased this, it was listed for $55.99 on Banggood, so around $56, but since then I've seen a little bit of a price hike for around $59, and I've even seen the same board listed on Amazon for $99. Personally, I wouldn't pay over $60 for a board with an S905X3. Over on the official Banana Pie M5 wiki page, they do have a lot of great information about this board, but uh, the main thing I was looking at when I initially got the board were the operating system images. So uh, if we take a look here, we have Android, we have Linux BSP, more Android, more Linux, Ubuntu, and Debian, Core Elect, Armbian, Volumeo, and one thing that really caught my eye were these Odroid Android images. And when it comes down to it, if you take a look at the specs of the Odroid C4 versus this, they're basically the same specs. We have that same S905X3 with 4 gigs of RAM, so they were able to get the Odroid Android image ported over, and I'm going to tell you right now that this image does work a lot better than their stock Android. When I initially got the board, it did have their stock Android build on it. It ran into a few bugs, and I couldn't get Google Play up and running. But with the Odroid image, which we're going to take a look at in this video, I have Google Play up and running, and it is super smooth. So really, when it comes down to it, this board actually already has some really great software when it comes to Android, and it's all thanks to the Odroid developers, because basically we're using the Odroid image on this Banana Pie board. All right, so here it is. Everything's been pretty smooth here, and I expected it to be. This is the Odroid Android image on the Banana Pi M5. Since we have that same CPU and same RAM, they could port it over really easily. Now, uh, we do have access to Google Play because we can install that super easily. Where is it? So yeah, if you want to, uh, you know, get Google Play up and running on here, I would definitely suggest running that Odroid image, but it's really easy to get set up. It does come pre-installed. You just need to kind of activate the device on your account. So the first thing I wanted to do was take a look at some video playback from YouTube. We'll just head over here. I am connected over Ethernet because this doesn't have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth built in. I got stats for nerds running here. Let's see what resolution we're at. We're at 2K. Um, I'm only on a 1080p monitor, but we can go up to 2K here. Let's just see how it performs. No drop frame so far. This is actually looking really smooth. And with the recent optimizations to these Amlogic S905X3 chips, I've also been able to do 4K really well on other devices. I just don't have a monitor plugged in right now to fully test it out, but the S905X3 does 4K60 from YouTube really well. And as you can see here, we got zero drop frames and we're sitting at 1440p, 60fps. 
The next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks, so I went ahead and ran three. First up, we have Geekbench 5. Single core, 175, multi, 583. This has fallen right in line with all of the other S905X3s that I've tested. Same thing with 3D Mark Slingshot, total score, 339. And the final benchmark I ran was Antutu. Now this is the light version because the full version wouldn't run properly. We scored a 90,399. Now it's time to move over to some native Android gaming. And first one here is Minecraft Pocket Edition. I always like to test it. And this seems to be running actually pretty well when it comes to this chipset. Fancy graphics is off, but we're at 12 chunks. And usually when I run this on a cheaper Android box with this same CPU, I have to turn it down to 8 chunks and turn a few other things off. But it's running decently here. Next on the list, we have GTA San Andreas. I'm basically at medium settings. I did try to max everything out, but I did have some stuttering going on. So at medium, this is really playable. And finally, for Android gaming, Asphalt 9. Going into this, I didn't think we'd run it at full speed, and as you can see here, it's a bit stuttery. I do have it at the lowest settings that I can go with this, and it's just a little too much for this board. I also had to test out some emulation, so first up we have N64, I'm using Mupin64 Plus FZ from the Google Play Store. This is GoldenEye007, not bad at all, I'm actually really impressed on how this is running with this Analogic CPU. It's not the best that I've seen, but uh, it's definitely playable. Here's some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. Marvel vs. Capcom 2, FPS is up in the top left hand corner. We're at the native Dreamcast resolution, and a lot of these games will run at full speed at the native res, but trying to go up a little bit on that resolution does make it lag out. And finally, at least for this video, we have PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP, Vulcan back in, 1x resolution, Ratchet and Clank, it's not the hardest one to run, but at 1x we can do it at full speed. Unfortunately, when it comes to the harder to run stuff like Chains of Olympus, Midnight Club, this is just not going to handle it. So basically what we have here with the Banana Pi M5 is the Odroid C4. I mean, if they would have added like built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, it would have been a much different board. That way you don't have to go through and buy a dongle or anything like that. But uh, with the Odroid C4 already in the market with a lot of great software support, I would definitely go with that over the M5. I will have at least one more video coming up on the M5 in the next few days, so keep an eye out. I want to test out Linux. I'm going to run through some Ubuntu and Debian. But uh, until then, if you're interested in learning more about this, I will leave a few links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the Banana Pi M5, just let me know in the comments below. I usually like doing Android first because there's a lot of people out there that get these boards and just straight up run Android on them because it's an easy to use operating system and I always like to see how it performs. And overall, I mean, it's performing just like it should on this S905X3. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. And like always, thanks for watching.